Hey guys, and welcome back to Ghost Trick. Well, we saved Detective Jowd from the electric chair, but uh, it's not going to do him much good if he's still stuck in prison. They'll just find some other way to execute him. Maybe with the rocket clincher mentioned in an earlier part, but I digress. We're going to have to guide him out of jail in the darkness. And le <sighs> let's just say this part is infamous <laughs> among Ghost Trick yeah. fans. So watch on, dear viewers, as we guide you through Chapter 9 of Ghost Trick. Game on. This particular chapter is very difficult because it requires very precise timing, more so than really any other chapter in the game. Wait, you mean more than the giant chicken? Yeah, it, nothing like the giant chicken. This is, like, so precise. Because what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with a bunch of uh, police officers who are a bit more kitted out patrolling the area. So you've got to be very precise. I say precise a lot, but it's very important with when you pull off your ghost tricks to be able to get through this chapter. Let's just say, if you're the kind of person who's struggled with certain, you know, timing bits in Ghost Trick thus far, let's have that and add to it that you have to guide someone who goes at their own pace, so you have to be very particular. And look, these guys shoot to kill. They're not trying to put you back in your cell nice and comfy. No, they want to put you on your ass. Well, they're all set for death anyway, so sooner or later, does it really matter? Also, I really thought that the difficult thing would have been the darkness, but yeah. I mean, if a chicken being one second away from someone's death wasn't high tension enough, <laughs> then uh, this chapter is gonna... It's just a barrel of fun. Oh yeah. Well, the, the darkness is a bit of a non-issue, because one, there's these lights flashing through the void and uh, also darkness don't really exist in the ghost world so you can use that as kind of like I don't know a tricksy way of getting around the handicap. Also I like how he calls them hunters it's like they're technically still police officers in SWAT gear but man Cecil's got to go for the dramatic flair and call them the hunter. I could think of a reason why he would refer to them in such an animalistic way, but to say why is a bit of a spoiler. For now, let's just uh, brief Jowd on how we're going to go about this grand prison escape. So here's what you're going to do, man. You're going to sneak behind this one cop, right? K. Okay. then you're going to chokehold him, break his neck. Don't worry, that's just the first step. <laughs> Oh, okay, first of all, you're going to incite a race war, and then Pat's going to fall out of the ceiling and alert the guard, and then you're just going to get a game over and do the whole thing all over again. All you need to do, detective, is you need to get in with the neo-Nazis, and then you get in with the Latin kings, and then you just have this giant prom night nightmare in the prison. Uh, Cecil, there's only, like, three people in this particular jail. I'm one of them. So, alright, you have one third of the power of the gangs. Cool. Okay, well, we've got a triforce of power. Alright, strategy meeting. Hmm, how are we going to go about this? Because there's going to be hunters on every floor. So, uh, yeah, let's just swap nodes for the time being. Well, I mean, you could just do the basic thing of, you know, just go out the front door. Like, it's super simple. Like, that that's clearly an option. It might get him shot, but if he ran quickly, I'm sure he'll be fine. And, you know, we could just go straight him back to life, so... Exactly! We literally have a safety net with Ghost Trick. It's basically like having our own recovery woman. It doesn't matter how often we broke our bones. They're just gonna get healed back up again. She'll suck them better. Oh, yes. Until she decides to just quit on you, which is good because, you know, can't be around for everybody. Is that a My Hero Academia spoiler? Uh... I don't think so. I mean, you should kind of figure out that the all-powerful healing lady is eventually just going to go on strike. I guess so. Not getting paid enough for this shit, I suppose. Yeah, Jowd's a bit... what's the word? Flippant about death? I don't know, maybe he's putting on a brave face, maybe he is just that brave. But, uh, eh, we've got a reset button, so, you know, I think he's okay in being a bit lax about the whole living thing. I think being on death row allows, gives you ample time to go through the stages of grief, so he's probably already at acceptance. Mm-hmm. What would be uh, your last meal, Richie? 
Ooh. A very good pizza. Hmm. A bit common, but I'll accept it. I'll accept it. Mexi, what about you? A soup made from ingredients that are in season at different times of the year, so it takes them fucking forever to get it together. <laughs> That's actually kind of brilliant. Hmm, as for me, a homemade dinner or Christmas dinner. Probably Christmas dinner. Best meal of the year for me. See, that's weird because I'm from a family where Christmas meals are ham, when I know that, like, for the rest of the world, Christmas meals are turkey, so... Yeah, yeah. Turkey, roast potatoes, Yorkshire pudding, mashed potato, carrots, sometimes peas. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Anyway, sorry. Food. F filling the stereotype here. Make sure you press the button at the right time, otherwise Jald will run out and get shot. And believe me, there ain't no health bar here. It's a it's a one for, not a two for, a one for. All I can say is thank God this chapter does have a checkpoint, which is basically the end of this corridor. Yeah. So uh, thank God that exists. Otherwise, this would be a very very painful chapter if it was not already. <laughs> also, get ready for an edit because uh, Mister can't do stuff to save his life over here, which is to say, Ed Muggins sixty four kind of did. You know, say what he just told you not to do. Ran out and got shot. Uh, maybe I should actually try listening to Richie one of these days. What a goof. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Although, to be fair, this was a... Uh, because you've got to go in a very specific route to get out of here safely with very specific timing. So yeah, I managed to not say precise there. Um... There's a point just after the checkpoint where you can get yourself into a bit of a mess in how you get through. And I ended up going over myself a bit there going, you need to go here? No, that's the wrong one. What? But uh, oh, 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 no, we're dead. So it was a bit of your fault, it was a bit of my fault. It took us a couple of tries to get it down pat because, as we have said, this is an infamous chapter. And it's just because it is difficult because of all the timing involved in it. There's only, like, one of these, like, particular set pieces in the game as well. So it's like, yeah, were they proud of this and they just wanted to show it off? Or did they realise it was maybe a bit too much to have it be a recurring thing? Um, my suspicion would be that it made sense for it to just be in this one instance because if you think about all the other chapters in the game none of them occur in a situation where there would be a massive SWAT team mm, sure. so and there's no other location in the game which is gonna be covered in blackness and you have to get someone to escape it I think it, it was just a it made sense for this specific situation and they thought yeah let's roll with it and also it shifts up the pattern from previous chapters where we've been going back in time to prevent someone from dying this time everything's actually taking place in real time so to speak yeah so uh, there's a different level of tension involved in it it could also be that this was the last level they worked on and therefore, or one of the first, and it just became the level that had a bit less uh, attention put into it, maybe a bit less testing mm. in terms of the frustration there, and it just kind of slipped. But I mean, the rest of the game is so solid, that's why it, it almost just feels like this is an exception. I don't, I feel like something must have not gone right for a level like this to be included in a game with so many other great levels. And also, it's the midpoint of the game. If you reach this point and you're not prepared for like a spike in difficulty, sorry about the edit there, by the way, I uh, kind of got myself caught in the darkness. Anyway, like I was saying, you should just be prepared for uh, what's to come, because trust me, this ain't the only mechanic, like, extra they're going to throw at you. Oh no, we might be dabbling with uh, other people's ghost tricks before the end. We might be dabbling in witchcraft. <laughs> well, we're halfway through October now at the time of recording. Uh, I do so like Halloween. It is a very comfy holiday. Eh, I don't really see it as comfy, but then again, to be fair, in my family we've not had the best of experiences with Halloween, so we don't really celebrate it all that much. Fair enough, mate, fair enough. 
That's weird, my family's like the exact opposite. Halloween's like a religious holiday. But that's mostly because with my parents being military, they tended to be deployed on Thanksgiving and Christmases a lot. But Halloween just seemed to be the one holiday that they would never be deployed for, so that seemed to be the one consistent family holiday we had every year. Mm. Yeah, you can't close the trap door if a guard's falling through it, sadly. Otherwise, I think we'll be having like a sub-chapter where you have to stop yourself from doing that and chopping the guard in half. It's like in Sims, where you have them go off a diving board and then delete the pool while they're in midair. Or, you know, you trap them inside a burning box and they just go up in flames. And <sighs> yes! Then fucking Johnny survives thanks to his pact with the Grim Reaper, of all things. Fucking firebox. It's so great, because when you explain it to people, it sounds so unentertaining. And then when you actually watch a firebox stream, it's so good. I think my favorite bit of animation in this chapter is watching Zhao roll along, like, inside the ventilation shaft or whatever. I don't know, it's weirdly adorable. He's a big man, he's a big round man. Mmm, yes, like a ball, if you will. Yes, uh, we should, uh, probably choose our moves better. Hmm, where to go now? Into this cell? Yes, I think so. Go into the toilet, flush this level where it belongs. <laughs> oh man, it's not <laughs> that bad. <laughs> it's like a loaf of bread just tumbling down a hill. I like how he has that one flat side, but the rest of him's that perfect circle, so he has that wobble roll. Mm. Uh, here we go, at least someone's getting use of these uh, drums and whatnot. Was the uh, kid in this cell planning to have his whole like group join him? Because he only seemed to play guitar. Probably, but also he could just be one of those annoying multi-talented people who can play multiple instruments. Jesus. And that, that's, that can be annoying, but yeah, that is pretty damn good upper body strength. So maybe it's not fat. It's all mass, bro. does very much look like muscle, and to be fair, if he is a um, detective, as he claims to be, and certainly seems to be, then he probably is going to have quite a lot of muscle on that body. Nicely done, team. Cool. And we got out just as the power was restored. Oh, talk about cutting it fine, eh, Shoe? It's almost like it's another coincidence. So, where did the other prisoners go? This is slightly disconcerting. Um, my assumption is they got evacuated out because they thought, oh my god, there's a murderer on the loose. Um, it's my assumption anyway, or it could just be that, you know, they got shot too, and uh, that's the end of their stories. Well, uh, they could have their own sizzles, bring them back to life, for now we've got to get Jowd out of here. We've made a promise to a lady. Exactly, those other prisoners are not important. See, it's kind of like how there's honor among thieves, there's also the beast among thieves, so all the other prisoners are just scared of Zhao since he does have the uh, violent crime. Mm -hmm. Well, to be fair, the sausage head guy did take someone hostage with a flamethrower, but yeah, I guess Zhao's reputation precedes him. For a guy that righteous to fall that far, that's got to be pretty scary, at least spiritually. It's going to shake someone's belief in the justice system. Yeah, and as I'm sure we will see, um, the situation might not be quite as black and white as it may first appear with Jowd. <sighs> Looks like we're going with the classic trope of the good guy learns about the grey. Ooh. Oh, okay. It's actually not done yet. Well, that's a, <laughs> a bit anticlimactic. Okay, let's get to an external phone and get the fuck out of there. Don't forget, you have to be at the phone in the office before you can go to an outside line. And also, Tom, I think there's a certain little uh, ditty that we may or may not be hearing very soon that you might really, 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 really like. <gasps> Do you mean... Estotrauma? Yes, yes, I do. Nice. 
<laughs> He's still dancing. Oh, Jow, Jesus, you got outside quickly. What, were there no guards upstairs? Evidently not. Please, they were all um, sent to the lower levels. These two guys are here to hold the fort down, and look what a splendid job they're doing. Hold the fort, not hold the fort down. Ah! I want to hold it down. Sorry, that's an Americanism which just drives my brain insane. Did you watch David Mitchell's soapbox too, Richard? Yes, yes, I did, and he's completely correct. Oh, I think this is a new number. Yeah, it is. Okay, that looks like outside of the prison, so... This should be interesting. It should be, because I mean, you would have hoped that Jared would have gotten a little bit further, but still. Oh. But having watched enough of Prison Break, we oh. know that even after the first season and they get out, society is the new prison. Exactly. There it is, Trauma! My favourite piece on the soundtrack. It is a pretty glorious piece of music. It doesn't play until halfway like through the game, and then it becomes a recurring theme, which is great. Probably just because the stakes get raised, so therefore the soundtrack changes to reflect that. Oh yeah, for sure. Hmm, huh, a very casual meeting to say you're apprehending a wanted criminal, an escaped wanted criminal at that. They have history, though. There's a conflict. There's a dynamic between these characters, and we have to see their ideologies clash. This is above petty laws. Speaking of clashing ideologies, something I didn't register when I first played the game. Look at Cavanella's suit, then look at Jowd's. True, he had that on because he was painting, but it's a nice contrast. Oh, yeah, the nice, clean, spotless press suit and the messy, oversized hoodie. Mm -hmm. Mix of colours as well, not just one. That, yeah, too. True. Let's trick the gun, and then the gun explodes. Nope. Can't really do anything <laughs> except uh, use telepathy right now. Oh, Jowd. Jowd, I know you didn't do it. Lin wouldn't believe in you so much if you did. Well, Lin's also a friend murderer, so we can't really trust her either. Hmm. You bring up an excellent point. Now, Tom, you know how you love this song so much? Uh-huh. Well, you can thank the um, composer for Ghost Trick for that, which is um, Masakazu Sugimori, uh -huh. who is well known for composing music for the initial si entries in the Ace Attorney franchise and also in the Beautiful Joe series. Nice. Which ah. is awesome. He also did some music for Translating vs. Ace Attorney. Um, but what's actually quite awesome is that um, the Capcom wiki has a list of the songs that um, Sugimori works on and they include Pursuit Cornered. Oh. Just, just hallelujah. And Gakuten Sisters Ballad, which is obviously Turnabout Sisters. Mm -hmm. So basically, he, he's behind two of my favourite songs from the series. Um, along with various other tunes like um, Gakuten Cyber and Trial, um, Investigation Phase, things like that. Um, and also, he was the voice of um, Manfred von Karma in the original Japanese version of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Oh, the Game Boy Advance version. Yeah, that had voice acting, didn't it? Yes. How interesting. I like that. It's kind of like uh, the voice actor for Yoshi. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, how he's, he was the composer first. So yeah, we've uh, we picked up a couple of interesting tidbits throughout this. Number one, Jab does not know Sissel's true face, which is odd because uh, we very clearly saw him painting it in his cell. Number two, he knows about the music box, so keep that in mind. The music box will become very important. It's a MacGuffin, or a checkoff box. It's a lot of things. It's a plot box. I would say, for the time being, it's a MacGuffin. Um, when it initially was introduced, you could say it was Chekhov's gun, um, because it's an item that will go on to have great importance later on in the narrative, though you may not initially initially be aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that sort of 
we now know that it's important, so it's kind of shifted from being a Chekhov's gun to being more of a MacGuffin. Yeah. Than anything, because the Chekhov's gun, the whole point of it is that it's kind of introduced nonchalantly and mentioned, and then it comes back right towards the end. So, a good example, it's a tiny spoiler, but in Shaun of the Dead, um, they con like early on they mention there being the shotgun above the bar. Uh -huh. And there's a conversation about the shotgun above the bar. That's just a bit of a joke because it's kind of funny. Later on in the film, it comes back and the gun gets pulled off of the uh, the side and used. And so it's sort of, it's a literal Chekhov's gun because it had no importance and then all of a sudden it's an important bit of the plot. Mm. Oh, he's having darts. Yeah, Chad, I don't believe that you believe you did this, mate. You don't seem like that type of guy, honestly. I don't see hatred in your eyes. He is getting a lot of time to discuss and reflect over his life right before someone's about to put a bullet in him. Like, the whole time slowing down before your death is going really extreme in this game. It does, yeah. Does, like, time cease to exist in, like, the telepathy void? That's the only explanation I can think of. Um, it must do, really. I mean, to be fair, you have got to remember that in uh, the ghost world, time does freeze. So, since we are talking to Jowd in ghost time, um, then yeah, time must be frozen right now, so this is why we can have all of this conversation and it not actually take up any time in the real world. Mm. So, think back to the, uh, the Chicken Kitchen chapter. Len told us about how Detective Jowd rescued her when she was a child from someone in the park. That day, he took the criminal's life. He did it in the line of duty, of course. He didn't exactly murder him, because murder is premeditated. He did what he had to do to save Lynn. But, uh, that doesn't mean it won't weigh on your conscience. You know, a good man's soul can become chipped over time. Oh, now I'm sad. I thought this was a fun game about spooky ghosts and laughing in the face of death, <laughs> but now I'm all depressed. Dude, the track's name is literally called Trauma. What were you expecting? Sunshine and rainbows? Yeah, and I have to say, Ghost Trick is a game that does a very good job of playing with your feels. Yeah. Like, it tugs at those heartstrings good and proper, especially as you get towards the latter stages of the game. And, oh, it's powerful. It is. Very much so. They're my feels. You can't touch them. I didn't tell you you could. Aww. So, yeah, he took the, uh, the criminal's life to save someone else. But that was a righteous action, and uh, I don't think his wife was trying to kill him at the time, so... All of this isn't really starting to add up. I, th I think uh, the news wire is muddled, so to speak. We haven't got all the bits of information yet. But at least uh, at least Cabinella is doing him a solid of not executing him on the spot for trying to escape. So, uh, yeah, one last phone call. I think that's allowed. So what you're saying is that Detective Jowd's uh, incrimination is fake news. <sighs> Annoyingly, basically, yes, that is his. That is what he's <laughs> you have to admit it. Say the word. Say yes. No, I won't. I refuse. <laughs> well, I mean, you could you could go with a sort of butchered quote from um, Kingsman Two: "News of my crime uh, was greatly exaggerated." Nah. Oh, Len, what are you doing on the floor? <laughs> she just said everything's fine. I don't like how panicky you are, young lady. Is uh, is that... I'm going to ask you a very specific question now. I don't want you to be alarmed. Is everyone alive where you're currently stated? <laughs> <laughs> including, and especially including, yourself. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not dead yet, so that's an improvement. It, it's definitely an improvement, um, but if Lynn's not dead, then who is? Because... <laughs> That girl carries death with her like a badge. <laughs> what if everyone in the world is dead except Lynn? 
Oh, mind blown. Is that the real ghost trick at the end? We learn that they were all dead all along. <laughs> except Lin. Yeah, except Lin. That's the subtitle. Ghost trick. Everyone's dead except Lin. They just had to give this character another great animation? Seriously? Of course. I love this line. It's like, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a present. Oh, accept it gratefully. Yeah, don't don't throw it up into the air. You know, I'm a cop. I'm not a baseball pitcher or whatever. Gee, Detective Cabanello, why does your mom let you have two great animation sequences? Oh, I'm just that fabulous, darling. I will accept no other answer. You gotta be executed now. Let's go, Cecil. <laughs> do the thing. Duly noted, Jowd. Duly noted. Are you talking to ghosts again, darling? I can never be sure with you. <laughs> it is true, that considering that no one else can hear Cecil, these characters sound batshit insane. Pretty much. There's the music again. Oh, a real sense of loneliness here. Look at all that negative space. It's rather beautitious in its loneliness. Please don't ever use that word again, Tom. I will use whatever words I like during my playthrough. Thank you very much, Mr. Ritchie. So, we've made it through arguably one of the uh, most challenging chapters in Ghost Trick. But uh, this game is far from over. So next time, we will be taking a visit to the Justice Minister's office to see what Lynn's gotten up to. See you then.